All right, Milos. Hey, it's time. Here I am again. For another uh, Milos' frame of mind. So, the last video, congratulations, major hit, 35,000 views. So, you were right. People really wanted to learn about that. And I think you debunked a lot of false information, which is most important, right? Um, did you get some good feedbacks on that last video? Yes, and a lot of questions as well. Uh, of course, you always have a little bit, uh, you know, the, the naysayers are going to say something. And always. Go, well, but uh, when uh, people that don't know you talk shit about you, you know that uh, you're somewhere. Right? <laughs> so a couple of uh, guys right there on the Jake Outer TV, you know, said, like, are you going to now talk about the carbs? So I thought it, uh, again, educational series. I talked about protein last time. I'm going to touch the subject of carbs. But before that, as you saw, we had the powerhouse. Jim That's right. Torrance, Dave Fisher, I want to give him uh, all the prizes. He's never here, but... He's, not, no, he's here all day. <laughs> the day, yeah. He leaves when we get here, yeah. You know, great competitor, great person, and uh, yeah, I just want to give him a shout out. Thank you for letting us here, there. So, uh, here it is. Uh, there's a lot of misconception about carbs. On all my uh, seminars and uh, in the training camps, I have a lot of those questions that people ask me, you know, but you know, keto diet is so effective for fat burning, and I said it a zillion times. Ketogenic diet, absolutely the best fat burning diet by all means. But uh, the bodybuilders have talked about hypertrophy, and uh, you know, there is uh, so much uh, place for carbohydrates. Now, uh, also, uh, those seminars, people jump in with, you know, carbohydrates are not really important. We don't have essential carbohydrates. We have essential amino acids, we have essential fatty acids, essential protein and, and fat, but they're not carbohydrates. Essential means uh, that uh, uh, your body cannot manufacture. So uh, carbohydrates uh, can be manufactured. This is why they are not essential, but they are also important. Uh, carbohydrates obviously is the primary fuel for the, for the brain, many other organs, but for bodybuilders, muscles must have carbohydrates. Now, um, first subject I'm gonna to touch, there is uh, uh, something called respiratory exchange ratio. That's a coefficient that goes from 0 0.7 to one. What does it mean? 0 0.7 uh, respiratory exchange ratio means that your body is using only energy from the fat. One, only energy from the carbohydrates. So, you know, pretty much, you know, every day, you know, normal life, uh, we at about 0 0.8, which means that body at all times is using both. A little bit carbohydrates, a little bit fat, and uh, going on. Now, when you do the... Um, aerobic type of training, like 60-65% uh, of a maximum heart rate, cardio, low impact, it's like uh, fat only, 0 0.7. And when you do you know, aer an aerobic type of training, like the weightlifting would be one. That's ideal. But many times happens in between. So as you remember, a couple of uh, episodes ago, I was um, describing what is my perfect diet. In the morning, I'm gonna wake up and do cardio, burn some body fat, that's fat burning phase. And then I'm gonna maintain the maintenance phase up until the training, and then I'm gonna create the anabolic phase. So yes, even first time uh, I mentioned, you don't need really carbs you know, throughout the day. You can get away with fats. If, if you wanna stay lean and, and uh, uh, reduce your body fat storage. But when you're gonna start training, you have to incorporate the carbs. Now people are gonna say, but Milos, you know, carbs too early. Carbs before workout is going to give you this carbohydrate in the bloodstream. It's going to be used during the every muscle contraction. So at that time, I would suggest obviously uh, complex carbohydrates, starchy complex carbs that don't have a insulin spike like sugars. At that time, a couple of hours before a workout, you can go with a starch. But during a training, and immediately after, your best friend is actually simple carbohydrates. As I was touching the subject of uh, digestion, absorption of protein, I'm going to just touch the subject of carbohydrates. As soon as you take any kind of carbohydrate, you know, already in the mouth, you know, there's alpha amylase, salivary alpha amylase is going to be breaking up the, the polysaccharides, the starches. And then this is going to go through esophagus, and in the stomach, it's a little bit different than the protein. Now, because of highly acidic environment, it's going to stop inactivate this. Uh, uh, alpha amylase until it goes to the small intestines, duodenum, and uh, that's when uh, uh, pancreatic alpha amylase is going to come into the play. So similar like uh, protein, you have a 
you know, polypeptides, now you have a polysaccharides. It's going to be broken down to the oligopeptides. Uh, it's going to be broken down now to oligosaccharides. And oligosaccharides are any, anywhere between 3 and 10. Then we have a, a lot of disaccharides. Sucrose, stable sugar, is the molecule of glucose and the fructose, right? So sucrase enzyme is going to break it and you're going to get uh, monosaccharides. And then you have a lactose, which is glucose galactose, maltose to glucose uh, molecules. But bottom line, from uh, uh, proteins, you're going to get amino acids in the bloodstream. From any kind of carbohydrates, you're going to get the glucose. Let me just mention. Monosaccharides are not just glucose, it can be fructose and galactose, okay? But uh, uh, as it goes to the liver, it's going to be converted into the glucose. So you're going to always end up with the molecule of glucose. That's what is the blood sugar all about. So now if you're maintaining your blood sugar levels, it's uh, 70 to 90 milligrams per deciliter, right? That's a normal glycemia. As soon as you touch some carbs, you know, blood sugar level is going to increase. As soon as blood sugar level is increasing, What's going to happen? Better cells of pancreas is going to release uh, uh, insulin, you know, storage hormone, and a regulator. You know, basically hyperglycemia is toxic, and if you have a prolonged hyperglycemia, you're going to have a, a nerve damage. You're going to have a, a retinopathy, neuropathy, and, and many other things. So your body's defensive mechanism immediately works as a, you know, bring the glycemia down, and that's what the insulin is for. Now. Uh, one of the reasons of type 2 diabetes, most common adult onset diabetes, is frequent prolonged elevation of a, a glucose. So this is why a lot of people jump at me because I'm insulin man and I'm promoting insulin and promoting glucose. Uh, and so many of my clients and people in seminars say, but if you use insulin, you're going to become diabetic. Quite contrary. If you uh, use insulin like we bodybuilders do, you're going to prevent pancreas burnout, beta cells. And many, many, many uh, uh, reputable doctors and physiologists agree with me. I don't want to promote now insulin use, but I, wanna, I want you to understand. We had a, a statue com complex carbohydrates to get, to get slow, uh, prolonged, uh, increased uh, uh, blood sugar level coming into the bloodstream. But now when you're going to be training, every muscle contraction requires glucose. So you're going to be burning up the glucose at a very fast uh, rate. Every muscle contraction opens up the cells, they are ready for uptake. So if you listen to my hyperemia advantage uh, um, theory talk, yeah, all the essential amino acids, uh, creatine, uh, glutamine, betalanine, citrulline, anything that you have in the blood, it can be input right there, especially amino acids. Right? But glucose is, you know, very, very crucial because, you know, people don't understand how much uh, they burn. You burn easily over 150 grams of uh, carbohydrates or glycogen storage in an intense workout. Guarantee. Actually, a good, a good friend of mine, one of the biggest experts I've ever met, uh, uh, Charles Polikin, back in the day he was talking about 200, you know, for really serious uh, weight you know, training sessions. So uh, if you can burn that much, then imagine how much uh, glucose you can supply in the bloodstream. It's uh, only at the time when you train that you have a, such a ex expender, uh, expenditure of uh, glucose. No other time during the day. Uh, so, you know, guys would uh, you know, jump in and, and tell me now, what kind of carbohydrates we should have during a training? You know, high GI, glycemic index, you know, so we, we should take, uh, you know, this uh, Vitargo or high glucose, high molecular weight glucose polymers. You know, there is uh, citric dextrin, there is, uh, you know, Vaximase, there is uh, so many other things. And I would tell them, what is that you're trying to accomplish? You're trying to accomplish to get the monosaccharide glucose in the bloodstream. So how can anybody tell me that polysaccharide can be faster for gastric emptying and absorption than monosaccharide. You know, I, I was, uh, you know, tricked by some studies that I read, you know, back in the day, and I believe that Vitargo was so superior. That's why I, I advised it, but, uh, you know, please think about it. Uh, if end product is monosaccharide glucose, can any polysaccharide, you know, 
thousands of millions of molecules of glucose together be broken down into the monosaccharide faster than it's already broken up. So dextrose is just perfect. And now some people can tell me, but how about uh, gastric emptying or osmolality? Because when I take dextrose, I get bloated. Uh, I really believe that also without me actually experiencing it myself. But then, you know, maybe if people are you know, talking about it, then it must be true. But as I have hundreds of uh, clients, more than 50% would tell me the opposite. If they take Vitargo, they will feel bloated. And if they take uh, Dextrose or some maltodextrins, uh, they will be perfectly fine. Hmm. So again, what are you trying to accomplish? You're trying to accomplish quick glucose. So take what you want, which is D, uh, glucose is uh, the dextrose. It's uh, uh, dextrose is uh, glucose. Uh, so it's uh, exactly the same thing. You know, you don't need to any, any fancy polysaccharide that will cost ten times more. Uh, glycemic index. Okay, now this is uh, you know, part of a carbohydrate that I also want to explain. Glycemic index uh, is uh, from zero to hundred, and it shows you how fast uh, the carbohydrate that you take is going to increase your blood sugar level. So if it's uh, um, high, it's going to be like, oh, no, no, hold on a second. When you're training and right after training, you want a high glycemic index. However, as far as food, you know, they start uh, uh, saying, if, okay, 0 to 55 is low glycemic index, 55 to 7 is medium, and then is high. But nobody has ever had only one type of carbohydrates and nothing with it. You always mix in with some protein, you always mix in with some vegetables, any kind of fiber, any kind of fat is going to change the glycemic index. Mm. So uh, I usually don't even tell them, okay, people are having a white rice, high glycemic index, no problem, because you're never going to have a white rice alone. You're usually going to have a steak and rice, chicken and rice, so do not especially throw in some fiber, you're perfectly fine. But I should take brown rice instead. I also used to believe that, oh yeah, it's advantage to it. But no, uh, uh, like, okay, Chris is eat, or <laughs> he would take a bagels or some, it's, uh, uh, you know, basically 100 or 100 plus. I've seen some glycemic index charts that the bagels and sourdough bread, uh, uh, the French uh, bread would be uh, 103. Rice cakes. I've also. seen you eat French bread. Yeah. <laughs> many, <laughs> the many, many yeah. Okay, so now what else, you know, with people jump in? A glycemic load. So glycemic load is no longer just a, a quant a quality, it's also quantity. If I have a one little teaspoon of sugar, yeah, it's only five grams. So how much uh, uh, insulin is going to raise? So glycemic load would be a little bit better uh, measurement for carbohydrates, but even that doesn't mean much. You know, I'll tell you, because uh, uh, for glycemic load, they go zero to 10, low, 10 to 20, medium, and 20, and above uh, is high. Now, in terms, how you determine? You take a glycemic index of something, and uh, usually it's taken, uh, surprisingly, watermelon. Watermelon is a, a fruit full of water, right? but has a high glycemic index, 75. Uh, but how much uh, carbohydrates is in it? Five, six, seven grams. So how you determine glycemic load? You take glycemic index, multiply uh, by 100, and divide by 100, uh, which is very, very low. Uh, but what happens if you take 100 grams of dextrose, which I do quite often with the, with the bodybuilders, then glycemic load would be over 100, which uh, you know, people, scientists would you know, pull their head. So another uh, scientific thing I don't agree with, they take uh, one gram of glucose is a one unit of glycemic load, which means if you take it any times more than 30, 40, 50, 50, 60 grams, you would go into the crazy amount of glycemic load. So I love science, I like to read it, but I don't have to read it. So every time in my training seminars and camps and uh, when question came, came about glycemic index, glycemic load, I said don't even worry about it. You can always have a mixture of protein with some carbohydrates or some fats. My diet from you know the first interview that we had is you don't need the carbs all the way until the meal before the workout. Meal before the workout, you're going to have the starchy carbs, obviously the protein, 
uh, you know, pre, uh, during and post, you're going to have uh, this supplementation that I was talking about. And then now, after the training, yeah, more than likely, you're gonna, if you want a uh, maximum hypertrophy, you're going to have to have another meal you know, to replenish uh, glycogen you have lost and to supply enough uh, uh, blood sugar. Can that meal be uh, such a complex carbohydrates? Yes, preferably, because I wouldn't want to spike it again. But uh, you spike it during the training and immediately after the training. So this is, in short, uh, as far as carbohydrates, right? Like proteins, we have uh, monosaccharides, disaccharides, uh, monopeptides, dipeptides, oligopeptides, polypeptides. Now they're just saccharides because they're sugars. So it's equivalent to that. Like protein, you need uh, you know, enzymes to break it down. Here you need the same enzymes. You need uh, alpha amylase, you know, basically the maltase, uh, you know, you need lactase. You know. So any carbo kind of carbohydrates that you have, you know, enzymatically have to be broken down to deliver the monosaccharide, which is going to then be delivered to bloodstream and be used. How much carbohydrate you should take? Again, it's very important because I was criticized by natural guys. You know, the bill of, <laughs> you know, this protein requirement that you gave is only for juiced up guys like yourself. <laughs> I am. Uh, you know, so, you know, what about our natural bodybuilders? Especially if I would be natural. What would I want? Be I would, even I would more want the same kind of hypertrophy. I would want to push, you know, I'm not going to push pharmace pharmaceutical hypertrophy. I'm going to try to push nutritional and uh, training hypertrophy. Right. So, for nutritional, uh, for natural yeah. bodybuilders, I was always suggesting as much protein as enhanced. Yeah. How much carbohydrates? Again, according to your uh, body type, about your body fat levels, and maximum hypertrophy, I would, there will be no difference. The only difference that will come about would if you use injectable insulin. You know, that would be maybe topic one of the for, yeah. you know next uh, episodes, and because I actually have a lot of requests for that. Uh, if you use it, then you have to counteract that uh, exogenous insulin. However, endogenously, what your pancreas is going to release is according to the amount of carbohydrates you're going to be eating. So, uh, before the workout and during a workout, I would suggest the uh, you know, same amount of carbohydrates as much as possible. Uh, 30 to 50 grams to ladies, 50 to 110, 120 grams you know, inter-workout for the guys. Quick question. What do you think about those people who like to work out in the morning, not not cardio, work out in the morning, okay. empty stomach? Do you think that's a good idea? Well, uh, if you wake up in the morning, yeah. right, you're going to be in a catabolic state, guaranteed, right? I have many of, of these uh, 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 clients like this. It's the only time that I can train, so, this is, so I train on empty stomach. So imagine six, seven, eight hours of sleeping if you're lucky, right? Yeah. Uh, your glycogen storage was depleting. Your, your body uh, needs energy you know, you know, for life. So you're gonna you know, pretty much come with uh, no nutrients. An empty really, tank. In the yeah. bloodstream. You're gonna now deliver you know, bloodstream that is empty, right? So no nutrients, no glucose to be used. You're gonna have to catabolize what? Muscle for amino acids. You're not going to catabolize fat in the morning to give you, I was talking about respiratory exchange ratio. You see, if you do the cardio, you're going to use fat. But if you, uh, you're going to train, you're going to use glucose. If glucose is not available, yeah, you know, you can uh, break down the glycogen. But with some glycogen, you're going to you know, more than likely break down some muscle mass as well. So you would be catabolic. So if your question is, should they, first thing in the morning, immediately do intra-workout uh, supplementation, amino acids and glucose? Absolutely. Okay. Because I always say, what is uh, training? Training is anabolic phase of the day. Yeah. This is when you want to push it in. Even though you are sleeping for six hours, you were depleting, see, immediate glucose. Glucose is in the bloodstream, okay? Uh, I say three minutes. Science tells you 10 to 15. Uh, simple sugar doesn't need to be broken down. Alpha amylase doesn't have to work, right? It's already monosaccharide, glucose. So if you do some search on the internet, they're going to tell you, uh, whatever carbohydrates you take is going to take about 10 minutes. 
However, if you have ever been in a, a hypoglycemia, shaking from yeah, yeah. Uh, low blood sugar, and you take uh, glucose tablets, how long does it take? You? Fast. About fast. three minutes. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've seen, and I'm not really a scientist and researcher to, to quote the study and when, but uh, uh, I can tell you a guarantee. If you have a glucose in the bloodstream, it's going to be in the, in the mouth. It's going to go very quickly to the in the bloodstream, awesome. three to five minutes. Uh, so uh, essential amino acids that you're going to take, creatine, glutamine, you know, everything that you're going to need is going to be available in the bloodstream. Even if you wake up in the morning and go to the gym without a breakfast, without a breakfast, no problem. At least take intra-workout supplementation, okay, and then continue with post-workout and a meal throughout the day. Awesome. There's a lot of people who do that. Yeah, so, they yeah. do that. But okay, so maybe again I have uh, enemies that are gonna jump at me. Uh, I'm challenging anyone to tell me, how can you not become catabolic if you have a six, eight hours of fasting? They'll say, well, well whatever I ate last night yeah. is still there. Uh, it's not gonna be there. You know, <laughs> That's what they're saying. Gonna, it's gonna last you for the first 15 minutes yeah. of a warm up and a couple of workouts. You, you know, if you wanna supply blood with the nutrients, you can do it very quickly because essential amino acids, BCAs, creatine, glutamine, glucose, it's all pre-digested, it's elemental form, so it goes very, very quickly. And uh, even uh, if you don't have a breakfast, that's okay. I had, a, okay, for example, uh, Gustavo Badal back in the day, I remember, he liked to train early in the morning, but I told him, you know, how important it is to have uh, some nutrients. So we tried it out and, and as soon as we switched it uh, with it, there was a huge difference. There you go. So, you know, I, I don't have a, a, my personal experience with it ever, because as soon as I wake up, I have to eat, you know, and that way. Me too. You know, so there's no way that I could actually train without it. Yeah. Thank you, Milos. Awesome.